first of all, before we get into my questions, I, I want to thank you for uh, more or less loaning Ms. Stonecipher to the Smithsonian Board. She has done yeoman work. You know, we've had some problems there, and she's done more than any other person that I know of in trying to, to straighten out this problem. She's a real gem. I was very sorry to hear that she's leaving your foundation, but uh, she was she's just a marvelous person, and I'm sure she served you well there, too. I, uh, I have spent most of my life in education. I have spent a great deal of my life, over 40 years now, trying to improve math science education in this country, both before I got here and after I got here. And I very much appreciate your comments about scientists and engineers serving as role models. In all my speeches to scientific and engineering groups, I encourage them to visit their nearest school. Uh, volunteer to speak to the classes, even better volunteer to take students on a field trip through their own laboratories, their workplace, uh, or if they're civil engineers, the nearest bridge they're building, things like that. A uh, hundred years ago, um, students learned these things on the farm. Today they come to school without a lot of practical experience, and uh, your comments were right on. The more we can get the engineering and scientific communities to interact with the students the best, I always enjoy it when I'm invited to speak to high schools. Uh, most of the students don't know much about my background. Uh, when, I'm, when I tell them I'm a nerd, uh, there's some disbelief there until I show them my plastic pocket protector. Mm. Uh, but I also tell them that in high school they have a very important choice to make. And that choice will determine whether they someday will be a nerd in the workplace or working for a nerd and they have to make the choice between being one or working for one. That really just tends to wake them up a bit to why they should study science in high school. I, I totally agree with the comments you've made, and I, I, I hope that through your foundation, and you do marvelous work in your foundation, uh, that through your foundation we could work together on this problem in our elementary and secondary schools. Uh, your comments were right on about PISA and, and what happens there. Uh, somehow we have to get the the uh, picture changed in America. I find it fascinating, for example, that surveys of parents, uh, the parents will say, uh, yes, we need better math and science in the schools. When you ask them about their school that their kids are in, they say, oh, our school is fine. They just don't recognize the depth of the problem. And I'd appreciate any comments you might have about how we can do a better job of waking up America, both the, uh, the parents and the school boards. The teachers, in my experience, and I've worked with a lot of teachers, I never blame them. They have not had the proper education in science or math and have not been taught how to teach it properly. But they are very eager to do it and very eager to do it well. So in here I've concentrated my efforts on professional development programs. I would be interested in ideas you might have about other ways that either business and government together or just government can actively get involved with this problem in helping the teachers in, in meaningful ways to help them become better math and science teachers. Well, I think the most stunning uh, data I've seen in many years related to education are how the huge difference in the very best teachers uh, versus the, the teachers who don't do as well. and. The willingness to look at that data and say, okay, what is it that those teachers who are doing very well, you know, what techniques are they practicing versus the other uh, students? And some of the assumptions that, uh, you know, about, okay, it's the ones that are certified are going to do better or the ones that have been there a long time. Some of those, as you really get into the data, you know, you, some of those assumptions don't play out and you really look, okay, what, what are those differences? So I think these... Uh, gathering the data and really looking at who's doing well and seeing that students who are far behind, if they're lucky enough to have good teachers, they can be brought all the way up to be well above average. The, the difference of, of having a good teacher is very, very dramatic. And yet, in terms of figuring out what those things are and investing in them uh, and use, using data to drive that, I'd say we are way behind other other countries in, in uh, uh, being able to do that. Uh, one other comment about Patty. For, uh, Patty Stonecipher, you know, I appreciate your comment. She's done a fantastic job at the foundation. Fortunately, she'll 
stay involved in uh, some special initiatives, although uh, she's, uh, she'll step down after 11 years of being CEO. So we'll still, still have her, uh, some of her, her efforts in on well, that. I, I, I appreciate that, and I certainly hope your foundation will continue its efforts in math and science education as well, because government is, by its very nature, limited in what it can do. It's, uh, it can't coerce, it can entice. Uh, foundations can, can do a much better job of coercion. Yeah, our, our biggest partnerships have been where you get one person who's really taken responsibility for improving the education system, like you know, the mayor of New York was said, okay, he'll base his uh, record on that, or, or the mayor of Chicago, where you have a clear level of responsibility that the right the right trade-offs are being made. Those are some of the systems where the willingness to uh, make tough changes is, is taking place. And we're seeing very, very good results in that type of structure.